Welcome back to another episode of Conversations with Father Greg. In this episode, we have a homily for Sunday, December 5th, 2021, which is the second Sunday in the season of Advent. Let's begin with a reading from Luke's Gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Euterea and Tachinitis, and Lysanias was ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of Christ. May I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, hi there, everybody, and welcome back. Over the last few months, they've been doing some work to improve the sidewalks in my neighborhood. A number of the walkways were disturbed for a few weeks, and they recently replaced the old, crooked and canted sidewalks with some new concrete. I took the dog for a walk the other day, and I admired their handiwork. The new pavers were nice and straight, and they've begun doing some grading work to help encourage rain and melting snow to run off away from the sidewalks. It's amazing to consider how much forethought goes into a simple concrete sidewalk, and how much better a good design can make an everyday item. If you've ever struggled with any kind of mobility issues, you may have an added appreciation for this kind of thing. In our reading today, Luke's Gospel picks up on this theme of making paths straight. But this idea It's not original to Luke. Luke is quoting the prophet Isaiah, who wrote these words nearly 900 years earlier. Through Luke, we hear the prophet Isaiah encouraging his audience to show compassion for the people of Israel. Isaiah wrote encouraging his audience to remove any obstacles from the path of the person who would facilitate that encounter with God. Isaiah makes it clear that he wanted the people of Israel to have a genuine experience of an interaction with God. This is all background information for what we read in Luke's Gospel this morning. Luke uses Isaiah's words to describe Jesus' cousin, John the Baptist. John the Baptist is the one crying out in the wilderness in preparation for God's arrival. Although both John and Jesus were about the same age, the Gospels tell us that John began his public work earlier than Jesus did. Although John was preaching and teaching before Jesus became publicly active, it's clear that John's main goal was to prepare people for what Jesus was going to do and to teach. Luke tells us that John was preaching a message of repentance, encouraging his audience to admit their brokenness and to renew their relationship with God. John also predicted the arrival of God's Messiah and would eventually declare Jesus to be that Messiah. John the Baptist was doing the kind of work that the prophet Isaiah had predicted by preparing people for Jesus' public work and teaching. John's use of baptism picked up on an ancient Jewish custom of ritual bathing before entering God's presence in the temple. 
It's important to note that John was using baptism as more than simply a ritual. Centuries later, St. Augustine would write that a sacrament is an outward, visible sign of an inward and invisible grace. Now that's a pretty good description of the way that John the Baptist was using baptism. For John, baptism marked an inward reality that had already taken place before the person ever entered the water. John used baptism as a tool to mark a type of inward cleansing that had already occurred within a person's soul. I realize that, in some circles, the term repentance may have developed a pretty negative connotation. For some people, the word conjures up images of televangelists and street preachers, but I think that's a bit of an exaggeration that distorts the original definition of the word. In its truest form, I think repentance involves the ability to recognize and admit one's own need for forgiveness. For example, there have been times when I've said or done something that another person has not appreciated. When the other person takes the time to call me on it, kindly and with some honesty, I often feel a sudden blush of embarrassment and I apologize as earnestly as I am able. That blush of embarrassment is the realization that I need to apologize for something that I've done wrong. Maybe you've had a similar experience yourself. That feeling, that same blush, is what John the Baptist would have referred to as the awareness of our own need to repent, to seek someone else's forgiveness. Sometimes we need to seek forgiveness from other people, and sometimes we need to seek God's forgiveness. The very act of apologizing sincerely becomes the means through which we remove barriers in our own relationships, whether with God or with other people. Naturally, this coin has two sides. It's not simply about being prepared to ask for forgiveness. We must also offer it to other people. We can help straighten our own paths by removing barriers in our own relationships. But does this text from Luke offer us anything more? Throughout Scripture, people of faith are called to welcome the stranger. The author of the letter to the Hebrews even says that some who have shown hospitality have entertained angels without knowing it. As people of faith, welcoming others into our midst and showing compassion to the stranger becomes a kind of minimum standard. You see, when we are able to extend genuine hospitality, we are seeking to recognize that all people are made in the image of God, no matter how broken they may have become and no matter if they can recognize that in themselves yet. For some, this sense of hospitality becomes an entry point through which they encounter faith in God. It also reflects the concept that neither our faith nor our lives are meant to be lived in isolation. Our faith should have an obvious and visible effect on the way that we live our lives. Becoming people of welcome can be the first step in making our faith accessible to other people. This concept of making paths to God straight goes beyond a simple sense of welcome, though. Time and again, Jesus taught his disciples to preach, teach, and heal, all while proclaiming that the kingdom of God had come near to those to whom they spoke. This was more than simply making paths straight through hospitality. This second approach is much more proactive and involves deliberately bringing our faith to others. This morning we hear Luke describing John the Baptist crying out in the wilderness, encouraging people to reconcile their own relationships and to prepare the way of the Lord. 
John's message still holds something for us today. Are we attentive to our relationships, removing any obstacles that may exist, both in our relationships with God, but also with our relationships with other people? Secondly, do we live our lives in such a way that our faith in God is visible to others? Or are there obstacles that we need to remove? As we continue our Advent preparations, may we continue John's work, preparing a path for God to work in our world and in our lives. Amen. Amen.